Come on. 
given us to come together together this morning. Father, we want to commit this service to you. We commit everything to you, O oh God. We commit our minds, our bodies, we surrender them all to you, King of Glory. We thank you for the pioneer team. We thank you, Lord, for the ushers and all those who are involved in this service, King of Glory. We pray for your special anointing upon all the ministers this morning. May you fill us with your Holy Spirit and use us this morning for your glory. For this, your children, Lord, we ask for your blessing upon all of them, O oh God. And we thank you so much, O oh God, for those who are following online. Father, we ask for your blessing upon all of them. Wherever they are, King of glory, may you minister to them. We pray that, Lord, may you speak to all of us this morning, and may we hear your voice, O oh God, that still voice this morning, O oh God. We want to surrender ourselves to you once again to be used of you. We thank you and we bless your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You are all welcome for this nine o'clock service. Turn to your neighbor and welcome your neighbor in the presence of God. It's such a joy this morning to see all of you. And we are happy that God has gathered us this morning to worship him. Let's give a mighty hand clap to the Lord for the protection he has given to us this morning. You are very, very, very welcome for this service and be expectant. And for those who are following us online, you're very, very welcome to join us this morning. It's a morning service and we'll continue with the order of service. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of a new day, the light of your presence, O oh God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. We have come together as a family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world, and to ask his forgiveness of our sins, and to seek his grace, that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may all give ourselves to his service. And if we say we have no sin, brothers and sisters, we deceive ourselves. But if we confess our sins to Almighty God, he is faithful and just. He will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You may be seated. I just request that you take a moment as you reflect on your personal life. Even as we come before the Lord this morning, he is ready to forgive us. He is ready to accept us the way we are. Oh Lord, hear our prayers. May our cries come unto you. May we open our eyes as we all join in the confessional prayer and pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought, word, and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. May the Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keeping life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The collect of the day. Today is the fourth Sunday after Epiphany. So may we all join in the collect and pray together. Oh God, who knows us to be set in the midst of so many great dangers. Grant to us such strength and protection 
as you may support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptations. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh Lord, open our lips. May we stand up for the short form of Gloria. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and forever, and ever. Amen. Once again, you're very welcome. Let's put our hands together as we welcome the Pioneer team this morning to join them. God richly bless you. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good and that is his nature. And that is his nature. Wow. It is already February 2022. We are moving. We are moving in the Lord. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Amen. With God on our side, we can advance a troop. With God on our side, we can scale a wall. He is God, our refuge, God, our strength, our ever-present help in times of trouble. That when the enemy comes like a flood, his spirit will raise a standard against him. Give him a shout of praise. Amen.
Jesus to the highest place. He has given him a name that is above all other names. And the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And every tongue confess that he is Lord. God has exalted Jesus to the highest place.
give you all the glory, Lord. We give you all the praise, Lord. You deserve all the glory. You deserve all the honor, Lord. You deserve all the praise, oh God. Our hallelujah belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you. All the honor belongs to you. All the praise belongs to you. There is none like you. We bless and worship your holy name. We lift your name above every other name. The name of Jesus, our strong tower, our ever-present help in time of trouble. Blessed be your holy name. request those who are seated to all stand up as we affirm our faith by saying the Apostles Creed all together I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth I believe in Jesus Christ his only son our Lord he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary he suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he seated the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. A big hand clap to the Lord. A big, big hand clap to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much, the Pioneer team and all of you. You may be seated. Let's now have the ministry of the word. Today's reading is from the Psalms of David, Psalm 18, and we shall begin with verse 1. Psalm 18, verse 1. The Lord is my rock and my fortress. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised and I am saved from my enemies. The cords of death encompassed me, the torrents of destruction assailed me, the cords of shield entangled me, the snares of death confronted me. In my distress I called upon the Lord to my God I cried for help. From his temple he heard my voice, and my cry to him reached his ears. Then the earth reeled and dropped, the foundations also of the mountains trembled and quaked because he was angry. Brethren, receive the word of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. I greet you all in the name of Jesus. And I welcome you to St. Francis Chapel, Makere University, for this nine o'clock service. And we are streaming live from St. Francis Chapel. And I, was, I want to welcome, therefore, the online congregation and also 
the television audience, family, Church of Uganda, Family TV, and also Right TV. We would like to welcome in a very special way uh, the freshers who are here today. And uh, so the first year students, you are here, and you're not ashamed of being called a fresher. Please do stand up very quickly. And, and remain standing. I didn't say sit. I didn't say sit. You have to listen to instructions. And uh, let me ask St. Franciscans to make you feel welcome. So welcome to St. Francis Chapel, uh, precisely, and welcome to McKenna University. Please be seated. I was hoping that the Vice Chancellor would be here. Uh, he usually attends this service, but he's not here. I don't know if there's uh, any other professor. Um, if you're a professor and you're here, that means you're good. You're definitely a good uh, man, good woman. Please do raise your hand, any professor. Aha, uh -huh. very good. This is uh, uh, Professor Fr James? Fred, yes, Fred, you come, you come. Yeah, this is the only time when I can also push professors around. And uh, <laughs> So in, in one minute, in one minute, please give these young people a word that will keep them going, a word that will keep them going uh, in their academic journey at this campus. Freshers, you are all welcome. I'm called uh, Frederick Tumine from the Department of Geography, Informatics, and Climatic Sciences. Uh -huh. Those things. In the School of Forestry, Environmental, and Geographical Sciences, and the College of uh, Environmental, Agriculture and Environmental Sciences. Now, you are welcome, and I, as I'm talking, I give myself to the Lord uh, on the 21st of no November, 2020. <laughs> so, you are all welcome, and you, are so, you, are, you should take God as your guide. And when you take God as your guide, every, everything will be smooth. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Frederick. I remember your testimony. I remember that a bishop uh, spent a night with you, uh, with your family, and you gave your life to the Lord. And this is a professor now who is not ashamed of testifying about the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Now, it's not easy to become a professor of Macquarie University, as you all know. So, freshers, that should be encouraging. If, 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 by the way, the chancellor of the university, Professor Ezra Suruma, is born again. The vice chancellor is born again. The chairperson of the university council, Mrs. Rona Magara, is born again. And so you've, you've, you've just heard and seen for yourselves. So the, the grace of God, which brings salvation to all mankind, all mankind has been revealed. Amen. So we thank God for you. Thank you, uh, Professor Frederick. And I want to welcome our young people from uh, Makere College School. You are somewhere. Uh, make some noise if you are there. Makere College School. Uh, they, they are so diplomatic. <laughs> You're welcome. I know you are there. You, at least you stand. You stand from there so we can see you. Uh -huh, there are some. You see they are all over. Uh, welcome, and uh, God bless you. 
you, you are my OBs and, and, and OGs because I was, uh, I completed my college school when I tell them, they say, oh, oh, really? In 1987, I, I, I completed senior six. <laughs> Thank you for praying uh, for me and for the nation upon the loss of uh, the governor. I went and uh, attended his burial uh, it was uh, a glorious send-off because he was born again. And that means that uh, uh, Professor Mtevire was my distant cousin. Uh, he supported me a lot in ministry, a lot. I don't have to disclose it here. Uh, but he's also the one who funded the roofing of this chapel. The roofing, yes. And, uh, and so he loved the Lord and he served him and we believe he has been promoted to glory and he's forever in the blissful presence of the Lord, uh, the qualification being his faith in Christ Jesus, whom he loved and served. Not because of money, not because he was a professor, but because of Jesus Christ. Amen? And, uh, and, and, and his what I learned from his death, what I learned is that you may have all the money and you have the ability, the wherewithal to access any medical facility around the world, but you still die. Because uh, it has been destined uh, that man, all men, should die once and then face judgment. So we, we, we are all at one time going to die and uh, that is why we thought, well, we didn't, we didn't plan it this way, it is God himself. This whole year we are reflecting on the theme, Hope Beyond Affliction, and this month of February, we will be reflecting on a sub-theme, walking through the darkest valley. So those valleys come. Those valleys come. Dark, dark valleys. And today, we, the topic today is the valley of death. So death is real. And we are all old enough to die. In fact... We are told by his personal doctor that he died of COVID-19. So that's also why you need to um, keep observing the uh, COVID-19 protocols. And that's very, very important. So, this is not a funeral service. No. We have come to the Lord and we are privileged to be having a dear brother who has come all the way from the UK to bring good news to us. Amen. The Reverend Stephen Gok Roger. Did I get it right? Good. Gok Roger. Excellent. Uh, the Reverend Stephen is here with his wife, but I will I'll just leave him to introduce the wife. I, he didn't give me permission to introduce the wife. <laughs> but he is a dear brother in the Lord. Uh, he got his theological training and ministerial formation in a very prestigious uh, college, Spurgeon's College. And uh, uh, at one point, as a very senior and seasoned pastor, he was the president of the Baptist Union of Great Britain in 1994, way before some of you were born. And that enabled him to engage with the leaders uh, of uh, other denominations. And uh, he also is involved in a wide variety of Christian initiatives, both in the UK and internationally. In fact, he has had ministry in about 50 countries. Stephen is vice president of the Bible Society and he is 
international. And he is an ambassador for the Haggai Institute. Now, the Haggai Institute is a very famous uh, uh, Christian Leadership Institute uh, in Hawaii and Singapore, and I personally attended the one of Singapore in 2003. He is also a prolific author, and Stephen has written more than 20 books. So we are so privileged to be having such a man uh, speaking to us today. Now, uh, last but not least, Stephen is a keen supporter of Manchester United. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, because uh, uh, personally, I am I'm a fan of Manchester City. <laughs> and I'm not about to, you know, to, to. Because, because of one reason. In 2003, I was in the UK and I had the privilege of meeting the president of the club. And he gave me a guided tour of the stadium. And after the tour, he gave me jersey. I, actually, I still have it. And so you understand that I was bought. <laughs> uh, if Man City can do that for me, I will cross. So it's such an honor to have you come to us, uh, Stephen, and we are looking forward to your ministry. Amen. So before uh, Stephen comes to preach, we'll invite the drama team with a skit to prepare the way for him. God bless you. sympathize with me. Mama, you need not even to kneel. And you know, do you know what I thought about? Mm -mm. To sympathize with you, I need the keys for the Prado. Mama. Yeah, you just give me the keys for the Prado so that I can sell it and get back my money. Peru. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Mama. You need, be, you need to be strong. You need to be strong in these things. Okay. Aha. But now let me sympathize with by taking a Prado. Okay. Yes, Narongo. Narongo. Yes, please. Um, how are you? I'm okay. Yeah, so um, my name is Bruce and I'm from the bank. So your husband came and borrowed 50 million and uh, he had paid 10. So according to the agreement you signed, uh, the article says, in case a borrower dies, the bank shall seek consent from the guarantor of which we shall take the mortgaged property, which is this house, and uh, to recover the remaining money. You get it? Loan officer, I have 13 children. Would you really help me? No. Having that, it, no. Doesn't make any sense. What you do? Sign and leave the house. This is bank property. Hurry. Hurry, 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 hurry. No. Sign it. No, no. No, no. Mm. What are you saying? Mm. Mm? This is bank property. You and her, 
leave the house before I come back. Why do you disturb Narongo? Can't can Narongo have rest in this house? See? Narongo, Narongo, come here. It's come too here. much. Eh? It's too much. Where will I go with that? What you neighbors are not disturbing Narongo. Why are they so? Why do you leave Narongo alone? Why do you leave Narongo alone? Narongo, come, come. Narongo, sorry. Narongo, these things will, these things will, 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 will. You, Narongo, we will back home. Now, now, Narongo. A boy mm-hmm. that can help you manage this place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You need an old boy that can help you mm-hmm. handle these, these errands. Eh? Mm-hmm. Hati, Narongo, mm-hmm. I don't know whether Sarongo had told you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sarongo had a son. And the son has been staying at my home. Mm-hmm. So, my children have grown. I want the boy to come here and stay here. Omana, you know who you are. You need to know their home. Junior, come, come, come. Junior, hurry up, hurry up. Now, hurry up, hurry up. For me, I want to go back home. Hurry up. Sir. So, he looks like the father I think you can see. Eh? You come here, hurry up, I want to go home. So, now, now, so, Junior, from there, this is your mother, this is my mama. This is your home. It's my home. Now, this is, this is the kaposho I have brought. Thank you. Mama, you're a big girl, you don't cry, Mama. So where's my crib? Mama, I give you a puff, one will do. Oh, okay, 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 no trouble, Mama. You're cool, I'm cool, right? You're cool, I'm cool. I give you no trouble. Peace, yo. Peace, mama. This is too much for me. Somebody help me. It's too much. This is the real valley of death I'm going through. Somebody help me. Somebody help me. Oh, my. The preacher is here to help you. <laughs> Good morning, church. It's a pleasure to be back in Uganda. Been here many times. Uh, my work takes me around the world, working with uh, governments and church leaders, denominations. Uh, and one of the places my wife and I love to come is to Uganda. And so great to see you all here ready to study the word this morning. I'm grateful too for my brother uh, Anesimus for his warmth of welcome. Uh, You know, on the publicity for this service, our faces are side by side. But when we came this morning, I met him for the first time. And so it was a shock for both of us. For he is a giant man of God. (laughs) And I am a small man of God. And so uh, the thing I noticed, I wrote to him yesterday about this, uh, that he has got the most lovely smile in the whole world. So that is great. Thank you for your welcome, my brother. That is really, uh, that is really great. I'm delighted to be preaching the word this morning. I want to welcome those of you who are watching online uh, and those on television. uh, And I'll have a word for you specifically a little later on in this message as you sit in your home or wherever you are watching this. But firstly, I'd like to recognize uh, two people here in church this morning. Uh, Firstly, as uh, Brother Anesima said, uh, my wife uh, is here. Uh, My wife and I uh, have uh, got actually five grandchildren now, five grandchildren, which we're absolutely thrilled about. Uh, 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 Of course, I think that my wife is a very blessed woman because she has me. Uh, Obviously, I think that. You're not surprised to hear that. Uh, And when she stands in a moment, uh, you will see why I married her, the most beautiful woman in the world. Okay, Janet, please stand. This is my wife. Uh, 
Do come and say hello to her afterwards. That will be, uh, that will be great. Uh, and now I want to introduce you to somebody else uh, who you will be pleased to know is not the most beautiful woman in the world. It's a Mr. Paul Kabunga. Please stand up, Paul. Paul uh, uh, is working with uh, Viva, the parent organization of Crane, one of the organizations I'm working with uh, here, working with orphans and vulnerable children in child protection, schools work, providing safe places and children in families and so on. Uh, and I'm the worldwide patron of Viva, which is one of the reasons why uh, I'm here. So thank you so much for your welcome. A real pleasure to be here preaching the Word of God in this exciting service this morning. And before I go on, I feel the need to say, uh, by the way, uh, can you guys with a camera follow me if I walk a little bit? Is that okay? Ah, good. I'm pleased your team are very good. If I walk a little bit, they can catch me. I just wanted to say to the singers and the musicians this morning, you guys are great. You guys are really great. Full of energy and life and praise to God. Thank you for setting the scene of the whole service in such a beautiful way. You are really appreciated this morning. I appreciate that. And I, yes, please give them a round of applause. That'd be great. And one of the things I love, my wife and I love about being in Uganda and being part of worship is the way you guys move in worship. Because in the UK, we worship like this. And here in Uganda, I, I can't move like it. My body isn't designed for this. But you do all this sort of thing here like this, you see. And I can't do that. My body just doesn't work uh, like that. So thank you for praising God with your bodies. In heaven, you will be giving lessons to English people <laughs> about how to worship. Okay, just so we know. Now, my brothers and sisters, the theme of our morning service is the valley of death, as you know now. Uh, the valley of death seems like a discouraging uh, theme. And if you're a fresher here or a high school student, it seems a theme a long, long way in your distance. But I want to say two things to you if you're younger. Firstly, the years will pass quicker than you know. And secondly, we are all one moment away from death. All of us. The frightening statistic on planet Earth is this. One out of one people die. And I have the opportunity to minister to government officials, to women and men in some countries who are unbelievably wealthy, as well as in the poorest communities on the planet. And I want to tell you there is no difference. Every single one will die. And what matters is, do they have hope in Jesus Christ? That's, that's what matters in the end of these things. So our theme is the valley of death. Uh, uh, I love being here in Uganda, as I've said, um, but once, uh, when I first came, many years ago, um, I think I experienced the valley of death, just, uh, uh, I uh, jumped on the back of a boda boda, and we went down this hill, and I think it was so frightening, I was in the valley of death on that occasion, okay. <laughs> in fact, anybody who gets on a boda boda and goes downhill uh, will end up in the valley of death, I am fairly sure. Because I have seen, you've seen the way they drive. There's a frightening for you. It's terrifying for us. The valley of death. So I want you to know that this morning's message is realistic. Death happens. But is full of hope and victory. Because I want to say this as we move through this message. That there is a valley of death which is real. But there is also a hill of salvation and victory. And out, amen. And out the other side of the valley, this hill called Calvary exists. And because of the cross and the resurrection, death has been defeated by our Savior and our Lord. So we, we understand that reality. Now, our scripture readings in the uh, uh, 
bulletin, in the program you have, there were three Bible readings listed. A Bible reading in the Psalms, which you heard, a Bible reading from the book of Corinthians, and a Bible reading from John's Gospel. The Bible reading from the Psalms was a story about David feeling entangled by the cords of death. That, that phrase is used. David lived his early life constantly anxious because an enemy called Saul, a king who was on the throne, was deeply jealous that David was God's anointed, God's next man. David would rise to be king, a king who conquered surrounding nations, a king whose name would go down in history. People will be talking about David all the way down to the time of Jesus and beyond. Famous king, big king, king dominating Jewish history. Saul hated him and wanted to see him dead. And time and time again, he pursued David to kill him, to remove him in the hope that he would never rise to the throne. So Psalm 18 is a personal testimony, a story of brokenness, of fear of death, of anxiety, of David always looking over his shoulder in case death is round the corner, whether death was going to be in a cave where David was hiding or in a wilderness where an army might sneak up on him at any time. Some of you this morning are here in church, and you're David. You're in a fearful state, an anxious state. Some of you freshers are beginning your academic career here at this wonderful university. But you're afraid. You're miles from home. Your village life is very different from life in the big city. This university is a huge campus far greater than anything you may have seen before. Some people have made you welcome, but other people have made you afraid. Life in the city may feel dangerous and out of control. Even as some of you were coming to church this morning, a young lady was mugged on her way to church today. This can feel a dangerous place. This can feel a sad place. This can feel a place of danger and even of death. So if you feel like that this morning, you're like David. And he understands who you are and what you're feeling. So be comforted that you are not alone. And then the Corinthians passage talks about how we have this treasure of faith in earth, earthen vessels. In other words, Jesus lives in us. If we're saved, we're born again. The Holy Spirit lives in our lives. We've been transformed. We're part of the family of God. We've been forgiven. We're going to heaven. All that's wonderful. The image of God within us. But we're in earthen vessels. Um, let me discourage you from a, for a moment. From the moment you're born, you're beginning to die. It's not very exciting, is it? We're getting older. My hair is getting grayer. I don't have quite the energy I had when I was 20 years old. Sooner or later, this body wears out. That's why Paul, writing to Corinthians, he says to them, look, death is real. Suffering is real. Don't pretend it's not. But it's a strange combination because in you lives Jesus but your body is frail and weak. And so we celebrate our faith this morning, but we are realistic people. We know that our bodies will one day wear out. And we even know that our life may come to an end quickly in a, an accident or a situation we can't control. So brothers and sisters, we better be ready for death. Because the key thing about the valley of death in this earthen vessel is that we're walking through the valley and that we're not making our home in the valley. So if you're discouraged today, if you're feeling death is all around you, if you're feeling broken, if you've got family members who've died of COVID-19 or of the lockdowns that have resulted from it, and you're feeling all alone and utterly beleaguered and the dark clouds hanging over you, you may be walking through the valley of death 
but don't pitch your tent there. Don't build a house there. Don't dwell there. Don't hang around in the valley of death. Keep on walking through because one day you'll emerge the other side into the glorious uplands of what God has called you to. The valley of death will not go on forever. It will end in glory. Sometimes God will move miraculously in our lives right now. And other times we'll struggle with difficulties, but our eternal destiny because of the hill of salvation, is through the valley of death it's, and out the other side. And the John's Gospel passage has Jesus teaching and uh, he teases the Pharisees and the scribes. He loves doing that. They think they're so important, right about everything. But Jesus wants them to have faith not here, but here, a life transformed. And so they're arguing about stuff, and Jesus, uh, they say to Jesus, you know, uh, you don't understand all this, and then Jesus says, wait, before Abraham was, I, what's the next word? Am, before Abraham was, I am. This is an amazing thing to say. They say, you can read it in John chapter 8, they say, no, 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 you don't even look 50. <laughs> uh, he probably wasn't even 30, never mind 50, but anyway. I am, says Jesus. It's taken from a passage in Exodus 3 where Moses appears and there's a bush burning, but it's not consumed. And God tells Moses his name. And God says, what name does God give Moses? I am who I am. And that means I'm the ever-living one. And that's the name Jesus takes, given to God in the Old Testament. He claims to be God in the New Testament. All of you have a past. You did something yesterday. We talk about was Life was happening yesterday, a word in the past. And you're all here right now, is, you're here in the present. And then there's a future for us. So was, is, will be. That summarizes our lives. We've years gone by, we're living in the present, and we have some years in the future, God willing. Jesus doesn't have that. Did you know? Jesus just has, I am. Before you were born, he am <laughs> now he am then he am he's always am always in the present always beyond time greater than that and that's why we know death is defeated because he's god and greater than death itself because he's the only person jesus who's been through the jaws of death himself on the cross he was literally dead a spear in his side blood poured out buried, dead, and yet, and yet, on the third day, he rose gloriously from the dead, having experienced death. So if you want to be safe from death, you better talk to the only one who's experienced it before, because he knows what it's like. And not only does he know what it's like, he's defeated it, and he is alive beyond it forevermore. <laughs> That is what Jesus is like. And so Jesus is the great I am. So that's a word of comfort to you. But it's, he's only the I am ruling the planet, but the effect of it is felt as we receive him as our Savior and Lord. If you're watching this live streamed, sitting in a home somewhere, or maybe a hotel room watching on television, or with some friends, and you decided to tune in this morning to the service at St. Francis Chapel, Macquarie University, Kampala. You don't know why you tuned in. Perhaps you just turned the television on, hoping for something else. But now you're listening. Now you're watching. And you are part of this great physical congregation. And I appeal to you, in the face of whatever trouble you're going through right now, I am inviting you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior where you are. 
You can kneel in front of your TV screen. You don't need to kneel, but you do need to pray. And you need in the midst of trouble to acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the defeater of death. And so I urge you in the congregation in the world of television and the congregation in the world of the internet and the congregation in this building to this day, make sure you've received Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord and live in him. And know the great I am to be transforming your life and filling you with hope and victory and joy. Wouldn't that be wonderful? If as a result of this, people met the great I am, the deliverer of death. You see, we mustn't pretend as Christians that we're immune from trouble. We mustn't pretend that because we're not. Life has its easy moments It has its very, very hard moments. Listen, I left my uh, hotel in central Kampala this morning at 6.30. And I was driven out to here. There was no traffic. Almost none. And so what if I said this to you? Kampala is a wonderful city. There's never any traffic. (laughs) What would you think if I said that to you? Yeah, thank you, Brother Onesimus. He says, did you hear that? He said, you're crazy if you think that's true. Okay. (laughs) Because I have also driven in Kampala at five o'clock on a Friday afternoon. (laughs) And I want to tell you something. There is some traffic. <laughs> there, are, there are hundreds and hundreds of cars. And there are thousands of Boda Boda drivers trying to kill each other. <laughs> uh, and possibly trying to kill me as well, I don't know. <laughs> but I want to say this to you. Some people think that life is always like 6.30 on a Sunday morning in terms of traffic. But I want to say this to you, all of you watching or in this building, life is often like five o'clock on a Friday afternoon. It's often a challenge. It's often a difficulty. It's often a pain. But in the middle of those valley of death experiences, preparing for the great valley of death we shall all go through, we do not mourn as those without hope. We don't. Because the great I am has been through this death experience and emerged the other side. And he's going to a place through the valley of death, out the other side. And for all those who know and love Jesus, this is a place where hope reigns supreme. Where every tear will be wiped away from our eyes. Every sickness gone. Not a hint of COVID-19. No disease, no sickness, no struggle, no pain, no tears, all filled with the hope of Jesus Christ. How wonderful that day will be. How true that occasion is. Sunday morning at 6.30, please God, lots of our life will be like that. But for many of us, lots of it is like five o'clock on a Friday afternoon. And when it is, we remind ourselves that our hope is in Jesus Christ, that the valley of death is only passing. It's a journey through, not a place to stay. It's a place where we can be confident that just as King David got through that valley, just as we realize that we are weak, but God in us is strong, just as we realize that the great I am, Jesus Christ, will be with us in our journey, alive forevermore, perfectly living gloriously dying, wonderfully rising and ascending and living forever so that death is defeated, hope reigns in the life of the believer and Jesus Christ is Lord over death. Amen. pray dear loving father we thank you so much for feeding us this morning spiritually we thank you for your servant the reverend Stephen whom you've used mightily 
Lord, we pray for your blessing upon his life, upon his family, and upon his ministry. Father, we pray that may you continue to water your word that has fallen. Lord, we pray that may it fall on a fertile ground, King of glory, and germinate and bear much fruit for you, King of glory. We thank you. We bless your name. We surrender ourselves to you, and we offer ourselves to you this morning. May you have your place in our hearts. We thank you, and we love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's give God a mighty, mighty hand of praise. Then to the Reverend Stephen for the wonderful sermon. Thank you so much. Let's now joyfully bring our gifts to the Lord.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. We give you glory and honor, power and praise. Indeed, we must sing about the goodness of the Lord. You've been so good to us. Jesus, we praise you because you conquered death. And so there's no more fear of death. Your word says in Hebrews 2.14 that you destroyed the one who had power over death. You did not just destroy death. You destroyed the one who had power over death. And so naturally he was destroyed. We thank you, Jesus, that you declared in Revelation 1.18, I was dead. And behold, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and hate. Satan does not hold that key. You hold it. And the more reason we must have a hope in you, Christ. The hope of glory. The more reason we must acknowledge that you are the way, the truth, and the life. The great I am. And friends, you are here. You have never given your life to Jesus. Even those online, you've never given your life to Jesus. This is the moment. Jesus is, the word of God says, his name is a strong tower. His name is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and they are saved. And you want to hide your life in Christ. This is the moment. Colossians 3, verse 3, we, we uh, says, for our lives we have died, and our, and, and, and our lives are now hidden with Christ in God. So there are two layers of protection around those who have put their faith in Christ. So we don't want you to lose this, uh, this precious uh, moment. Th this is an opportunity of a lifetime. And an opportunity of a lifetime such as this must be seized within the lifetime of that opportunity because opportunities are not lasting. And so you want to give your life to Jesus, please do raise your hand and I'll pray with you. Just raise your hand with all eyes closed. Yeah, thank you. I'm seeing a hand. I'm seeing a hand somewhere. Just, yeah, another hand, another hand. Raise your hand straight before the Lord. You want to give your life to Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me pray. Let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, the name above all names, we pray for those precious souls who have raised their hands that you will now give them strength to boldly boldly declare their faith in Christ that people may know that you are the savior that the devil himself may know that we know Christ we know Jesus the savior of the world the word of God says that I am not ashamed of the gospel is the power of God and so just come just come uh, just come wherever you are those of you who have raised your hands come down here from the gallery bring your property don't leave uh, your property just come with it we are coming to the end of the service just come those of you whose hands are up uh, you come here so that we pray for you do not be ashamed don't worry about your neighbor come down from the gallery wherever you are and let us pray for you there were several hands on the other side just come just come just come No turning back, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Jesus is here to save you, the Savior of the world. Decided to follow 
Coming. Just clap to the Lord, clap to the Lord, clap to the Lord. Because you see, the Bible says that when one sinner, when one sinner turns away from their sin, the angels in heaven rejoice. How much more must the angels be rejoicing now? <laughs> Hallelujah. Is there anyone? Is there anyone else before we pray? You are, there, there's a chance. There's a chance for you. The world behind me. No turning back. No turning back. That cross before. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Now lift your hands. You are here. And those of you who are watching, please do join. Do join in this prayer. The rest of the church, stretch your hands upon these precious souls and let us pray. Just say after me, Lord Jesus, today I have heard your voice. You're calling me. The great I am, you are calling me. The one who destroyed death, you are calling me to associate with you. So I come to you. I come home and I ask you, Lord Jesus, to now come into my life. I have opened the door. Come in, Lord Jesus. Be my Lord and Savior. Wash away my sin with your precious blood and write my name in the book of life. Today I declare that I am born again, that I'm a child of God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. It is as simple as that. Now, now let's, let's see. Let's do a quick exercise. Uh, say, uh, shout number one, two, four, Nineteen precious souls. Nineteen precious souls. And the number you have just shouted, make it your psalm. Psalm. You know the book of Psalms? So, uh, you're going to read Psalm 1 today, hereafter. Psalm 1. You will read. Two. Make it your psalm. And the Lord will speak to you very powerfully through that scripture. Amen. So we give God all the glory. Thank you for responding to the, to the call. And those of you online, uh, please do indicate in the chat room or on Zoom, whatever, whichever you're following, that we may be able to follow you up. Uh, you're going to fill some information in a form, and we will follow you up to give you the, the nurture that you need and deserve. And now to you all, beloved, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. And may the rods of healing, protection, the rods of prosperity rise to meet you. And may the rains of the Spirit fall softly on each one of you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you. May that blessing Bring to fruition all your dreams, prospects, and aspirations. And may that blessing become your portion on a daily basis. May that blessing go ahead of you to scatter the darkness from before your path and behind you as a rear guard and around you to protect you. And may that blessing be upon the freshers that the Lord will guide you through your campus life and that you will all graduate with victory and may that blessing remain with you all and your loved ones now and forever and ever amen 
Let us give to the Lord a big hand clap. Amen. Hallelujah. So from here, please follow uh, Brother Alex, who is there, right there. He will have a moment with you in the tent. And uh, the decision you have made will determine your destiny. Decision determines destiny. Amen? And you have made the greatest decision a man can ever make. So God bless you. Just follow uh, Brother Alex. So to God be the glory. We want to thank you all uh, for coming to church in a, such a large number. Now remember the continuing students are not yet here. So I don't know. Uh, we, we need to build another church perhaps. And uh, we want to thank these people who are going to give lessons to the Bazungu on how to worship God in heaven. <laughs> and, uh, and also how to play those instruments. Some angels will be shocked to see the way, the way you play these things. And uh, thank you very much, the pioneer praise team for your ministry. Let us give it up for our brother Stephen. Hallelujah. For sharing a very powerful ministry, uh, message. You know, you don't have to fear death anymore, any longer. Amen. Because Jesus conquered death. We know that life is short. Death is sure. The probability of death is what? Is one. Sin is the cause. Remember the story in Genesis 3. But... Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. Amen. So let us now go out into the world to love and serve the Lord. And, and the response is we go in the name of Christ. Amen. Let us go out into the world to love and serve the Lord. Amen. God bless you.